I don't know what the fuck, but uh, I don't really care really, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just going to another country anyway, at the end of the day. So, but like really, uh, most interesting shit here. But getting back to the rules, yeah. Uh, if you got a woman with this book, you're in deep, 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 deep doo-doo. This book is like a fucking grenade. That's all that I can say. You know, um, wow. Now, on the plus side of the benefit of this book here, now, I do wonder sometimes, in, in terms of like quantum thinking or whatever, in defense of women and in, in, in my ex-wife's defense, I look at this from her point of view sometimes now, you know. Uh, if I were in her shoes, always put yourself in the other person's shoes now. If I were 300 pounds plus, uneducated, unemployed, no degrees, uh, no money, living with my sister, no credit, no cars, uh, just no little to no resources, uh, you know, I'd probably be trying to like read a book and find some guy with a million fucking dollar internet porn site business or some shit to go ahead and uh, fucking hook up with. But I wouldn't necessarily swindle him and I wouldn't lie to him. It's really interesting what I think about it, you know, it's like how desperate or how far would a woman go to go and get married? Is that the ultimate goal of a girl to get married is what I wonder? To have that like Walt Disney fantasy of the house, the car, the kids, the picket fence and all that, you know? I don't know. This was all 20 years ago I'm talking about here too, you know? So I wonder if my ex-wife had not gotten this book, would I have married her? Would I have tolerated her abuse for so long? You know, it's very, uh, you know, quantum physics, but I'm here, I'm alive, I got uh, everyone's, hey, hello. I got everything uh, going on for me here. So, it's all good, yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, pause this video here. I'm gonna go ahead and dig into these YouTube replies because like one thing I do lately is I go on, uh, I leave comments on videos, like I never used to do that shit, but now I leave comments and I do video replies, so. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this shit up and see what people are talking about and do some video responses on here, all right? So you guys uh, have a good day. Pick up the book on Amazon, The Rules by Ellen Fine, whatever. It's the book that worked against me. It, it worked on me, so it's pretty good shit. You know, it's very good psychology. Uh, if you're a woman that has like a borderline personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder, this book is just the fuel that you need to go and, uh, to go and uh, fuck up some man's life like me. So, you know, I, I, I put it out there. I know girls watch these videos and shit too. So this is, this is the shit that you want to get to ruin a man's life like my own, you know? I'm immune to the shit now, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, I do want to give the authors props and you have to give, you have to give props uh, to people that are intellectually superior to you at times in order to learn from them. I agree. I mean, I don't, I don't totally agree with all the, uh, if someone gets over on you, you should like eternally hate them and you should this, that. No, you should learn from them and then determine what your own weaknesses are. Deter figure it out so it can't happen to you again and then find some way to make it work to your advantage. So the way that I'm making it work to my advantage here, I'm just living my life, I'm exercising, I'm getting in shape getting back in shape, I should say, doing more movies, taking better care of myself and extending my lifespan, more or less. You know, you have to, uh, at some point you gotta realize, like if you internalize, if I were to go ahead and internalize, like I did for many years, if I go ahead and internalize all the, uh, all the fucked up shit that people have done to me, you know, most people take advantage of empathic people, by the way, I'm, I would consider myself to be an empath, you know, someone that puts others' needs above their own, Basically, people that buy this kind of book and subscribe to this shit, it's like they're codependent, obviously, which means, you know, they were not, chances are they were not a single only child. Uh, they had some childhood issues from like birth to age seven, some kind of abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, something, 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 lack of attention, lack of a father, whatever some shit was lacking for those early years in their life and this carried on to their adulthood so they're they're basically like an adult child and they're looking for someone to try to 
get over on much much in the way that children will try to get over on their parents at that young of an age you know boundaries they look for people with weak weak boundaries or whatever and I used to be one of those people so reading this book and doing some more research and shit on the internet just showed me that you have to set boundaries with people and uh, then you won't get crossed over more or less so that's what it is and if these people are even your own mama sister brother cousin family boyfriend girlfriend all that bullshit it doesn't matter Bad people are bad people, and most people have bad people in their fucking family. You might live in a house full of bad people, you know? I don't, I don't know what the fuck people do, but it's like... I'm just learning that uh, I was raised... I was personally raised by a mother with a narcissistic personality disorder. She was very codependent, uh, middle child, daughter of, you know... Teenage mother, alcoholic father, is what it is. They're no longer living now, but I'm just saying, factors are factors. And with that, she's going to raise me to become a dependent or a codependent. And I'm, I'm basically going to be like her helicopter parent, as psycho psychiatrists would say. So people in my position end up like being, I'm like the father figure guy to my mother. It's fucking crazy. It's yeah, it requires therapy. But anyway, that, that's my thing that I come from, or that's my dynamic. So if I'm all brought up with this you take care of me, like Asian bar girl mentality, then I'm going to go out and seek someone that's problematic, that needs fixing, that needs my help, and I'm not going to abandon them. I'm going to give them all my resources, all my time, love, and care so that she can grow and flourish and not die and prosper you know, and have kids and all this shit that she otherwise would not have experienced had I not crossed the border and come into her life, you know what I'm saying? And I'm eternally the baddest motherfucker on the planet for doing this, you know? It's like people who, uh, whom you quote unquote save will end up resenting you. And this is true of many women, mostly foreign women in other countries, but uh, they, will, they will resent you for this, ultimately. It, it, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. It's not it's not logical, but it's just the way the psychology or psychiatry works out So be very careful when you try to help people try to keep people on a like a mutual one-to-one -one exchange ratio is what I've learned uh, You know anytime that somebody stops investing in you you should stop investing in them uh, Only fuck with people who care with you who care about you and you and your well-being, you know don't fuck with people just because they want access to your resources, status, whatever. You can trade that on a one-to-one -one basis. But ultimately, if someone you're going to spend the hours of your life with that you can't get back, your hours, days, years, decades, it should be with someone that cares about you. And uh, people demonstrate how they care about you by their actions. You can't trust their words, only their behaviors. Everyone talks that baby I love you shit, but it really boils down to what have you done for them every day. I mean, if you love somebody and care about them and you live with them and cohabitate with them, you should, de you should be devoting like hours of your life to them every day to try to help them to do something to ease their life or improve their life or help them to become a better person. They should compliment you is basically what I'm saying. People in relationships should supplement and compliment you. They shouldn't bring you down and you shouldn't have to, they shouldn't drag you down or slow you down. If anything, both of you should like further propel and push each other forward and it's really difficult to get a partner like that these days really difficult because well for one this is the united states of america two there's hypergamy feminism and many other social isms racisms and this and that speaking of racism by the way um i got called a fucking nigger today by a white girl yo this hasn't happened in years i was like i'm kind of like excited about it yo i went to the fucking this is like a great fucking story it's happened just like less than an hour ago right so i'm on the way to fucking um it's early right now it's like 11 o'clock right now in the morning so i'm off to the grocery store when they open up at uh 8.30 or 9 or something. We're driving my little old fucking car. You know, I got an old fucking Volkswagen. It's like 20 years old, older than that. And I'm just cruising, right? So fucking, uh, not even fast. It's an old car, 30 miles an hour at the most. Going down the road. And uh, this white girl, about maybe 22, 23 years old, comes screaming on this little BMX bike little trick bike around the corner uh just like just flies from around the corner right blind corner right into the middle of the fucking road in front of my car right 
I had to lock up the brakes. I didn't hit her, thankfully. But, you know, I had to like lock up the brakes and I had really good reflexes, fortunately, or as my mama said, she would have been highway pizza, quote unquote, right? So I stopped the car safely, lock it up, and she looks at me, just smirk, and she's like, fuck you, nigger, <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> now the old me, the old me would have been like stunned, like, oh my God, what? Now me, after doing like all my therapy and shit, I didn't even wait for like 0.75, three quarters of a second or whatever. I just yell out the car, get out the road, bitch. <laughs> like the black, the African-American came out of me instantly, right? <laughs> she, <laughs> and she angrily pedals like onto the sidewalk or whatever, down some side street or whatever. You know, it's a small town. I'll probably see him again. Fuck him. If I see, if you're watching the video, girl, Get your black guess I'm saying get your black ass out the road. Get your white ass out the road. <laughs> but in a, I bring the story up though to, to bring something up though. Okay, you should always, always look at things from the other person's point of view, right? Now I ex I exercise personally vigorously, right? Like I went running like two hours before this girl was even out in the street. I'm smart enough to go not in the fucking bright sunlight, right? <laughs> So while I'm doing my run, oftentimes, obviously, I got to cross the street like 50 fucking times on all my route or whatever, right? I look both ways, I this, I go. Maybe 1% of the time, you know, I might make an error in traffic. And I have been hit by cars before. It does not feel good. So, yeah, I know what this shit's like. So, yeah, man, the girl probably going through her head is like she's got some shit on her mind. She's pedaling the bike fast. And me, the evil black man, is driving my car in the road where it's supposed to be going 30 miles an hour. You know, so to her, I'm the bad guy or my car is the bad guy. And she's got fight or flight in her system, adrenaline, and she's she just almost fucking died. So the first thing that comes to her mind is, fuck you, nigger. I'm the bad guy, right? All right. Now, she probably doesn't feel like that once the adrenaline or cortisol or whatever cools down in her bloodstream or whatever. I realize, like, I spooked her or whatever, right? But it's really, it was still really pretty fucking cool. It was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Fuck you, nigger. I like white girls, man. White girls are fucking fun. So, yeah, man. That is what it is. I guess, I mean... The more and more I think about it, I mean, she's def she, was, she was definitely, if you're entitled enough to go and pedal a bicycle in the middle of a fucking road, just cross the street without looking at top fucking speed. I mean, the girl had to, I, I bring this, the girl had to be going at least 20 miles an hour on the fucking bike. I mean, she was literally pedaling standing up. So that means when you're pedaling standing up, you're got, you know, you're really moving.